I think architects are becoming more cognizant of whole system thinking, not only how to hold up a roof, but to also think about the systems that go into the building. In many cases, architects have been reliant on city services, plumbing, power, all those things that can be taken for granted. And I think a, a current approach in architecture is to try to think beyond that, to think about all the various systems that impact the building and how to, how to create it in a more sustainable fashion. We wanted to create the, a roof that would actually become more of a field, you know, something that you could stand on one end of the building and actually read the shapes as they flow across the whole building. The roofs are designed to actually capture the rainwater that falls on the roof. And then once that rainwater is captured, it's then stored in a, in a large cistern uh, within the building that is then used to feed the toilets. So it's about knowing what to do with the water that falls on, on the site. And then once that water, in fact, leaves the, the toilets, there's a bioreactor that then filters and cleans that water up to potable standards. And so none of the water, none of the wastewater that is generated at the visitor center actually goes to the city. It's all released on the gardens. We created an array of about 400 solar hot water tubes that capture the, the sun's heat energy. And that heat energy is actually stored in 50 boreholes that surround the building. It's then used to heat the domestic hot water. It's used to heat the floors and some of the cooling in the floors as well. We actually produce more than we need at the visitor center itself. We take that heat energy and send that over to an adjacent building and we then trade for their hydroelectric power. When we were doing the design of the building, we really wanted to have a feeling of a natural environment. We created a, an oculus at the center of the building, which is a skylight that captures the sun's energy. There's a heat sink that actually warms up when the sun rotates around the center of the building. And that heat sink sort of charges the air within the building. So as the hot air rises, it pulls in air from the perimeter of the building and then exhausts it out through the oculus. So creating passive features that are simple to do is something that creates a sense of comfort. The, the way that the air moves within the building doesn't feel artificial. There's something very natural about that. We wanted the building to feel raw. We didn't want to have a lot of finishes in this building. We wanted to have the actual materials that are holding up the building be the materials that you can see. You know, in speaking to this idea of rewilding, we imagine those walls kind of capture the spirit of Vancouver Earth. I think that the, the whole building, in a sense, can evolve over time. It's something that can grow. It's something that will change during the seasons.